sound good. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to say call hello. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakadash. Send double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone. I want to send much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing the word of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, in sincerity and truth. This is Great Millstone Dallas, another class session. And as you can see, today's lesson is going to be titled This is not a popularity contest or for being cute. This is not a popularity contest or for being cute. For those of you that uh, that know what we're about, you know, this ministry, this this course, this pilgrimage, you know that we were meant to be sent to preach this word across the four corners of the earth until the return of Yahweh Shah. In the midst of that, what you've seen happen over the course of really the whole time that we've been in Israel, but more recently, these last 15, 20 years of social media, uh, uh, splits in camps, and everything like that, there's a mentality that you see. There's a difference between what people consider great millstone, which is the rough, ragged, bum, uh, you know, ragtag, crazy guys versus the more wannabe polished groups. Yep, yep. You know that that were matching uniforms and march around, or 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 they cr create clickbait and they want to do podcasts with people in the world, you know, and things of that nature. Well, when you read the scriptures, we're not here for all that bullshit, man. We're not here to look cute. We're not look. We're not here to make you feel like you need to come into this because of the way we look. Right. You know, we're not here to uh, uh, cater to your BS feelings. We're not here to cater to the status quo mentality that's out there. A lot of the stuff that's in the scriptures, the Western world shuns and looks down upon. Right. So you see Israelite groups catering to Western philosophy right. Right. in their doctrine. No, no, God. That's that, that's trying to be popular. What, you, right. what are you saying? Just to add, add to that good point you made, because you, you think about it, you have the elect remnant that's scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So with this Western way that you guys got, you got guys portraying themselves or portraying a ministry, I'd rather say, how is that going to appeal to an Israelite foreigner in Iraq or in Southern Africa or wherever, Australia? You know, you're limiting the ministry when you tie a Western mindset with it. That's why you got to go according to what the scriptures say and how it says to be done. That's all I was going to say. Right. And so now we're coming to the time that we're seeing these wars pop off uh, just today. It was said that uh, they said that Israel, the state of Israel, is, has gathered more tanks heading towards uh, northern Israel and the southern border of Lebanon. So we're, we're, we're starting to see these things get fermented up in the valley of Jehoshaphat, man. Well, <laughs> as we go out there and preach and prophesy about these things, image is going to come up. Right. What image are you putting out there in the truth, man? We want to remain humble. We want to remain contrite and serious about the word of the Heavenly Father. So I want to open up with that in Psalms. And then uh, we're going to get some scriptures. And we'll, we'll uh, I always, I'll be looking at the comment board. I'm here on Remnant Safe Bar. But brothers got scriptures on deck. We're going to just pull it. Let's go, champ. Uh, this is in Psalms chapter 37, verse 11. It says, Start at 10. Okay. Now, Psalm, 9. Psalms 37 and 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And that's not the mentality that you see out here. You don't see people waiting for the Lord. You see people wanting to build the kingdom of heaven now in their eyes, in their vision. They're not waiting on the Lord to come and reestablish this thing. Right. All right. And so they're putting the people in the wrong spirit and mindset. And we'll get to that more as this lesson progresses. Go ahead, champ. All right. It says, verse 10. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Mm -hmm. And you look at what Esau has, what these other nations have, and, and Jake be wanting to have that. They be coveting Esau. Maybe not your That's right. That's why they take on contracts with the Edomites. That's why they take, take on 501c3s and jump through their little hoops for their little money instead of keeping the ministry pure. Right? Keep reading. Verse 11, verse 11. Your, 
Psalm 37 and 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. It says that the meek shall inherit the earth. That's the spirit that we should remain in. Not looking to be um, uh, internet famous. Right. All right. Not looking to be internet, uh, you know, popular. Right. Right. Trying to be cute. Right. You know. They want a world friendly view of this thing of ours, man. Basically. Right. They're trying to make a world friendly doctrine to get more members, to get more numbers, which equates to more money. Right. Right. So it says the meek shall inherit the earth. We get this word meek, the word I nah. Right. It says poor, humble, afflicted, meek. Poor, needy, poor, and weak, right? Poor, lowly, meek. That's that. That's going to be how the men of the Lord seem and look right. as they face their enemies, man. But Jake wants to portray themselves as rich, opulent, proud, strong. They don't want to be meek and humble. Right. You know, they want to call Great Millstone a bum camp, but it's just a meek camp. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I got a precept too. Let's go, champ. There's more. I didn't know if there was no, that was it on that. Okay, what you got? This is the book of uh, first Samuel, chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. It says, Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich, he bringeth low and lifted up. Because ultimately, we're waiting for the Lord to lift us up, and we know that eventually the Israelites are going to be raised up on the planet Earth under Yahweh Shai. But you got guys that want to force the course, and ultimately. Really, it's the mindset of they don't believe your house is going to come back. Mm -hmm. It's really just a show for a lot of guys to gain popularity. Yeah, I don't know when he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that I have created this exactly. lifestyle, but, you know, instead. But it's like, that's fine that you want to do that. Right. But don't make merchandise exactly. of the ministry to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't get it on your own power and volition. Right. You got to use people for the and, and use this knowledge to do it. Right. You're selling the truth like a real jerk. You know what I'm saying? Was there more on that? Con, verse 8. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggars of the dunghill. And we're all in the dust in those beggars from the dunghill at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? That's why we've been in captivity. Mm -hmm. The Lord put us in a poor spirit until we raised up and sitting in those heavenly places physically with Yahweh Shai. But in the meantime, there's a way to live, a way to conduct, and more so like we're going into this lesson, a way to uh, carry ourselves humbly. You know, and that's the point of this lesson here. It says to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of uh, Salakia, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he had set the world upon them. But the point going into it, how it's the Lord that's going to raise us up from the dung hill to sit among princes. It's not anything that you're going to be able to do within your own tangible source of power. It's not going to happen that way. You know, that right. Luke 6 and 24. Unless you have a precept. Uh, I'll just get yours. Let's go, champ. This is the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 24. And it says, But woe unto you that are rich, mm -hmm. for ye have received your consolation. Yeah, woe unto you that are rich, man. You got what you needed. Right. Right? You want to be a multimillionaire utilizing this truth or uh, within this? You're in the world. You're not in this. You're not, your mindset is not for a world to come. You're enjoying the world that is. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is uh, First Corinthians chapter seven and verse thirty-one. Oh says, man, I was gonna pull that. I was gonna pull that. We'll get to that one next. We'll get to that As a matter of fact, pull that one next. I want to talk about that scripture. Kind of, kind of. But I want you to read the next couple of verses here in in Luke. Yep. Uh, Luke six and twenty-four. I'll read it again. Mm -hmm. you got rich. So you, we we locked in, bro. Let's go, champ. Yep, yep, yep. Well, <laughs> hey, that's <a> scary, <laughs> It says, but woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Uh -huh. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto <laughs> you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. And that's what we see. We, we see a lot of uh, 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 playing games and wanting to be cute. I use that word cute because Jake want to show you, oh, they look, at they're getting married, celebrating right. and all this and that, man. When we know right now that ain't that ain't the time or mindset to be in. Eating and drinking, and marrying and giving unto marriage. I mean, of course, brothers are going to be married, but the forefront of your mind is this ministry. No. And so you got to put off your marriage. A lot of times your wife is going through a lot of mental strain because you really ain't there for her, man. 
You can't be. And to be there for her takes away from your spirit. Right. To be in the truth. You have ups and downs with your woman in this truth, man. Because you, you there's, a, there's a level of disconnect. There's a level where she's in the world and you're not. And so it, it's just not going to link. You, you try. But if you focused on that, you're not going to be in this truth, man. They're We've seen to, it. You know, they're trying to mix the two. They're basically saying you can have, you can have it all. You, you can, can have, have, have the best of both worlds. Exactly. <laughs> and the scriptures don't say that. The scripture says that that's going to be a struggle. Nope, nope. And to present it as anything else is misleading the flock. Nope. You have to constantly remind the flock that that's going to pull at you in the flesh right. and take away from what you need to do in the spirit. Right? So it says, woe for you that are full now because you're going to hunger. Mm -hmm. You know? You got to be in a mindset of being hungry. You got to be in a mindset of accepting losses. Humble, meek, lowly, poor, contrite. You got to remind yourself, and especially as things get pop uh, popping off right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so read 25 and 26. Luke 6 and 25, it says, Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Popularity contest. Mm -hmm. You got guys that go out there and they present the ministry yeah. so people can consume it and so they can be more popular, get more likes and clickbait. That's, you you, that's right. We're going to get to that one. Uh -huh. That's right. That, that whole debate <laughs> spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won the debate, <laughs> man. That's not what we're out here for. We're out here to present the truth, man, to cast a net upon the lands. Whatever pull is pulled in is get is get is pulled in, man. All right, keep reading. It says, Woe unto you, Luke 6 and 26, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. <laughs> See? And it's the same cycle, nothing new under the sun. You you uh, pulled that scripture out last night, the street speaking. Mm -hmm. Nothing new under the sun. Now let's go to that in the uh, first Corinthians. Yep. Uh, this is first Corinthians 7 and 31. It says now this whole chapter is yeah, relevant it's, it's really good. because it's talking about the situationships that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, you we have brothers want to say married and everything. We ain't married. We have a situation. We have a situation. Yep. You, you just do the best that you can with it. You know, you know, we're not we can't over glorify what we got going on in this world. We're doing the best we can right. with what we have. Okay. But Paul is admonishing those who are committed to the ministry in this chapter. Right. Okay. And then we're going to skip down to verse 31. Let's go. Yep. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 31. It says, and they that use this world as not abusing it. Mm -hmm. For the fashion of this world passeth away. The fashion of this world passeth away. You got to have that in your mind, man. Yeah, you're going to you take care of your kids, your job, your businesses, or this or that. All that's separate from the mission. And that's what happens is that people want to blend in the mission of the ministry with day-to-day -day life in a way that's not congruent or spiritual. There's a separation still. That's right. We got to be real about that. This is a war. And the wife and children and your businesses don't go to war with you. Right. You're on the battlefield with the, with the other soldiers out here fighting. All right. So there is a there's a separation from that. Now, you're using the world. Right. But not abusing it. You're not being consumed by that. You about to say something? Yeah, they want to blend in a fashion of this world with the truth. Mm -hmm. And it don't go like that. It's always going to be that separation. They're basically trying to uh, package the truth with, within the fashion of this world. Right. To That's make it. it more appealing, you know, so I can still be an Israelite. I can still be on social right. media. I can still have my feet tiptoeing in the world. <laughs> now, I know I'm an Israelite, though. Yeah. I'm so called keeping the law. And the problem is, is this is what they sell to the people. We don't sell that shit to right. you. Right. That's why people hate the way we come. We don't sell a fantasy Israelite life in this world. Mm -hmm. You cross over to this ministry, this is what it's about. You might have some situations or, or you, your, your, your wife, your kids, you might be divorced or your, your job situation. We'll deal with that and we're going to uh, uh, give you the tools to flourish. I'm an ambitious man. I'm not some bum ass nigga. And none of the brothers are. But we keep the main thing, the main thing. Now, I want you to go to uh, Luke and read about making merchandise. Luke 2 and 14. Did you yeah. have something else? 
Uh, it's all good. You know, no, bring saying? it out. Bring it out and break it down. God, well, I got this right here in second half of 16. No, we're going to get that at the end. Okay, God. Bro, if y'all like that. John 2 and 14. John 2 and 14, I got you. God. Okay. This is the book of St. John, the second chapter, and the 14th verse. Excuse me. Pages stuck together. But it says in John chapter 2, verse 14, it says in a salak. Uh, yeah. And found in the temple those that sold ox. I'm going to start a little higher. I'm going to start at verse 12. John 2 and 12. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Yahweh Shai went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves. Right. So there was an opportunity. There was a gathering that happened. What happens during Passover? Everybody flocks into Jerusalem. And they're committing sacrifices. They're getting what they need for their own personal households so they can do the sacrifices to keep the Passover. So for those who were in the temple, this is an opportunity. And you see this right now. You see, because since 2007, we are all getting prepared for Yahweh Shah's return, aren't we? So we're all li listening to the videos, getting this knowledge, getting prepared. And so you have people within this temple, the, the, the church that's online, Taking advantage, right? Selling the materials. Right. Hey, man, your garments, you know, you know. Buy, buy this new garment. Do this, do that. Do these. Yeah. Making merchandise to the people. Read it, read it, read it again. Gosh, it says, and the Jews' Passover was at hand. Uh -huh. And Yahweh Shai went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. Uh -huh. And if I may, just to go into that, it talks about the changes of money sitting. Well, you gotta remember, like you said, you had Israelites from all over that would come over to Jerusalem to celebrate. And they would come, they had their own form of currency that they would bring. So in order to get that currency to get the stuff, you know, the merchandise that was there, they had to send it into the exchangers. So immediately those that, you know, those Jews that were sitting there at that table, had their mindset toward money, 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 <laughs> money and merchandise. This is an opportunity. Yeah, it was coming at them in all different ways. They just get in the back, mm -hmm. you know, just to put that, you know, illustration out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you continue in verse 15, it says, and when he had made scourge, uh, Salak had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. And said unto them that sold doves, take these hence, make not my father's house in the house of merchandise. Jeremiah, get out of here. Get out of here with that, man. You remember that, uh, Elder Yashawamba? When they were uh, uh, selling sit downs yeah. on YouTube, yeah. you get a part of the sit down. Yeah. They'll give you what it was like a 10 minute clip and say, if you want the rest of the sit down, you got to go pay for it. And this is what made Great Millstone blow up back in 07, 08, because they just put the videos up. So you literally had hundreds of videos of breakdowns. Meanwhile, you go to this other group, you get half a sit down, you got to pay for the rest. <laughs> you got you to pay to get the information. <laughs> They're making their house a merchant, and now they've done do it in a different ways. This is why donations. Donations and that Dr. Umar spirit gifts more gifts, yeah, right. Donations, thank you, sister Ashanti. <laughs> thank you for that ten dollar donation. You could have yeah. could have been 20. <laughs> you know, Shoot, just they, got the barcode on their they got the barcode on their sit downs now. Spirit. Wow, that's what I was about to say. Pretty much, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, well, the I cash app, right. Yep, that's what I was about the to say. The cash out barcode. Yeah, yeah. They send such and such since this amount of dollars, such and such sent fifty dollars. Donation. Yeah. The Lord loves a cheerful gift. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's what it. it's about, man. Mm -hmm. It's about grifting the community, man. It's about grifting the flock. It ain't really about just preaching the word. All right. That's why they made this into a popularity kind of. We gotta make this thing look flashy. We gotta make it look cute. We gotta look make it look appealing. We gotta have gimmicks. We come over here, we, we have wedding parties, okay? We march around town, we look strong. But you actually are weak. 
and you make yourself vulnerable to the enemy. Okay? Was there more on that? Uh, let's see. That's it on that, right? Yeah, that was the point. Real quick, Jeremiah 7 and 11. Yeah. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 11. And it reads, so the page I stay together. Mm -hmm. It reads, in this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Yeah, man. This is what we see in the temple, man. Dens of robbers and thieves. Yeah. You know, because uh, anybody got the NLT and they pull it up? Uh, Second Peter 2 and 1. You holding Second Peter? I want it in the NLT, though. Okay, Baba Kusha. All right, Second Peter chapter 2, uh, starting Ooh. verse 1 in the NLT. But there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and de even deny the master who bought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. Keep reading. Many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. Mm -hmm. And because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see, man. You got new breakdowns coming out, Trinity, yep. breakdown. All right, all types of madness. Mark of the beast is this. The mark, they got three mark of the beast breakdowns. Mm -hmm. You know, which one you gonna pay for? Right. And, and even look at um how how yesterday more than it was uh, a lot of people coming up. Yeah. Saying y'all not like them other guys. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I saw a video yesterday where Barack Obama was on there. Was I saw that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, his... Told him he wasn't an Israelite because right. he because he uh, he had light skin, but his dad was a full blown Puerto Rican, yep. and his granddad he was an Ephraimite. Right. He was lighter than you. Why like, he was he was light he yeah. was light bright. Yep. But he was his dad full blown Puerto Rican, and you could tell his spirit he was J yeah, J my spirit. You see it. Mm -hmm. But some other group told him, "Oh no, you're an Edomite." Not this fake dog. Oh, he even said it. Yeah. Like, man, it kind of messed me up a little bit. Man. Yeah. <laughs> That was fucked up, man. You know? Go back and let's uh, call and read. Let's start at the second verse, Bible Kusha. Second Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 2 in the NLT. Many will follow their evil teaching Exodus and shame and morality. And because of these teachings, the way of truth will be slandered. Because of these teachings, the way of truth shall be slandered. Keep reading. Verse 3. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. Thank you, Sister Ashanti. Appreciate that donation. <laughs> For those of you that are gold class members, gold class subscribers, mm -hmm. we're going to have a special class for you at 7 p.m. Come join uh, me and Bishop Sansarala, whatever his name is, for a special teaching class. Just pure assholes. This ain't about a popularity contest of being cute. This is about the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. Okay, and we come, we coming into serious times, serious times where that's going, it's going to matter. The mindset. Go ahead, champ. Well, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah condemned them long ago, and their destruction will not be delayed. That's why we see them all breaking up now. We told y'all about these badass kids. All right, now they all, here. all on, all on camera. When it should be held in the background. But it's more clickbait. Okay? Keep going. No, it was verse three. You finished that one? Yeah. Verse three? Cool. Get that in Exodus for sure. Now, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 2. And it reads, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. So this is why they get up on there and they want to pan the camera and show you how many people in the camp and they have. We're going to, oh, brothers and sisters, we're going to come to St. Louis, Missouri, and, and we're going to march. And then they got the drone camera right. to go around and make it seem like they got 100 million people when it's the same 400 yeah. niggas that was right. in the last city. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you remember, and, and Jake was like, wow, that's powerful. That's powerful, right? <laughs> Good. The scripture says, follow not a multitude to do evil, man. You know? 
offense, right? And just if you if you look at what they're doing in a carnal eye, yeah, like you like you said, in their mind, it's as powerful to stand in third. That's why you got to be locked in the spirit 24-7. You mm -hmm. know, when you ain't in the spirit, you're going to look at that and be deceived by that. That's guile when you look at it. But in the flesh, it's a movement and it's powerful. But through the spirit, that ain't what the Lord is looking for right now. You know, so as the scriptures say, uh, the blind shall lead the blind. Well, that's it right there. And they tell about it. Mm -hmm. We see it, you know. That's right. But this is uh, back in Exodus 23 and 2. It says, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in cause to decline after many to rest judgment. That's right, man. And we see this, right? We see this all the time. So don't follow a multitude to do evil, man. You got to follow the spirit of Yahweh by Shemel Rashad. Somebody can grab Matthew 11. And I actually want to start up and read Matthew 11 and 20. Was there more on that that you wanted to pull? Uh, that's Verse 3, I'm interested to see what that, that it said. Well, I'm going to read it. Neither shall thou countenance a poor man in his cause. It sounds like blaming a poor man in a sense. Because if that's the case, then that's, that mm -hmm. goes right into the lesson. Yeah. Yeah, it says uh, in the NLT. And do not slant your testimony in favor of a person just because that person is poor. Yeah, that's it right mm -hmm. there. Because mm -hmm. what are bum eyes? What are bum cans? And they always throw that out there yeah. Yeah. to have people's judgments all messed up about their opinion towards Don't know us. Yeah. Don't yeah. know none of us. He's, he's, he's bums. He's broke bums. You know? Man. And, and most of y'all not doing better than, than the brothers in Great Millstone. You know? Now go pass out a turkey so you can get that grant money and shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, that's it. Okay? And make sure you uh, you do it right. Or we're going to deny you that, that donation. That gift. Yeah. They're taking gifts, man. Matthew 11. Started uh, 20. Everyone yeah, talks about Capernaum. All right, fine. But we're going to read down. The point that I actually want is on down. Mm -hmm. But I want to read up. All right. So this is uh, Matthew 11 and 20. Then begin. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to pull it up. No, no, no. You good, bro. Matthew 11 and 20. It says, Then begin he to upgrade the cities. Wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Mm -hmm. One TD to rising. They kept doing what they was just doing, man. That's what we see. We see people get this word, but just continue to live the same carnal lifestyles that they, they want to live. That's right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. He's proud to have fringes on. Yep. All right, continuing on. Uh, Matthew 11 and 21. Woe unto the Terrazin, woe unto the Bethesda, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. The other day, they would have repented. <laughs> they would have got it. You know, but Jake is so stubborn and hard headed. They see the gathering of the elect. They see all of these things happening as far as the prophecies goes. And they still worried about a damn cash out. They still worrying about carnal dumb stuff that don't got nothing to do with Yahweh shall return. And all this stuff that you thinking that you're building up being burnt. Go ahead. Verse 22. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Mm -hmm. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Mm -hmm. So Capernaum was a place of opulence. You know, it was a rich city. Right. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, when you get the name of Capernaum, uh, I think it's like comfort, something like that. City of comfort. City of comfort. Yep. Village of comfort. Yep. Yeah, of comfort. Uh, bring it out, you know, if you got it. Capernaum, or Capernaum, it says, village of comfort, a flourishing city of Galilee situated on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee or Lake of Gennesaret, near the place where the Jordan flows into the lake. That's right. That's right. And then when you read down into the strong, the uh, Theos Greek lexicon it actually says consolation. consolation yep. We talked about the consolation of the rich. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's your consolation. They were chilling. They were chilling. Yeah. 
The big chilling. Mm hmm. Go ahead, keep reading. So that's what you got. You got Jake wanting to make this the new Capernaum. Wanting you to believe that uh, uh, on this side, we're meant to, to be building up and basically have the kingdom of heaven on earth now. Right. You know, that's why they believe they're in the new covenant. They think they got it. Yeah, right. Just completely out of their damn mind. You don't have to suffer to follow the Lord. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we can have it all here, man. All right, or better. Uh, Brother Gabriel and Sister <laughs> Sarah getting married. Jump in the world. Two weeks later. And this sister, man, she don't listen at all. You know what I'm saying? Let me get a damn counsel with you and your sister. Yeah. George Clinton playing in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Playing in Tate Pendergrass. Two weeks later, yeah. bro, they fighting like that. Yeah. hurt. Yeah. I like my bacon, my turkey bacon, crispy. <laughs> anyway, man, go ahead, man. Matthew 11 and 24. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Go ahead. It says, at that time, the Yahweh God answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. Right. So when you hid these things from the wise and prudent, get that in the NLT. I'm gonna read that in the NLT. Right. Verse, verse twenty-five. Verse twenty-five in the NLT. Right. It says, "At that time, Yahweh shall pray his prayer, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever, and for revealing them to uh, to the childlike man, to the meek, to the humble. All right." To the obedient. Keep reading out. Uh, verse 26, it says, Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, mm -hmm. and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Turk, take the, take this yoke upon right. you and right. learn of me, man. All right? Go ahead. It says, uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Mm -hmm. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why is it easy and light? Is it easy and light if you put off the ways of this world? Right. It's easy and light if you put off the mindset of needing and desperately coveting, wanting to be the man on this side, wanting to be so damn cute in the eyes of Yasha Allah, wanting to be, uh, make this a popularity contest for donations, gifts, all right? And this is what you see, man. You got the uh, Sakari fighting over debate topics and shit. Well, he wanted to debate over this. I'm like, bro. Bring out the bird, Just man. go preach, man. Damn. That's it. That's Fuck that debate. Yeah. You would have kept it simple. Y'all could have been still chilling. But y'all still trying to make this of some damn clickbait, bullshit ass debate. I was gonna give it to. Sorry, I knew I could cut him on this topic, but he wanted to go into the new covenant. And <laughs> man, who cares, man? More strategy for a debate. That's strife yeah. and vain glory. Which I perceive that's you know a car was doing all that bullshit. Yeah, that's, I you know. know. See, that's his, yeah. his and, and, and kind of I was always kind of like not trying to deal with it, you know, or whatever. I don't know the details, but when you listen to it, it's a bunch of immature shit, man. Yeah, shouldn't even be on camera, you know. But Jake loved watching this car, man. Like, yeah, it's like the brother. The, 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 I just yeah, I'm man. I'm not gonna watch. Yeah. I'm not gonna watch a kid. You know what I mean? You but, still look like a nigga in the world, and no, you this for like. But yeah, it is what it camp. is. But just keep it simple, man. Somebody pull out that scripture, man. The simplicity. They're saying, yeah, yeah. How was I? You mentioned it earlier. Yeah, yeah. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse two. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, 
that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Now, a chaste virgin lives, a, she lives a simple life, don't she? Is she out in the club? Does she want to do this and want to go do that? Do want to like that? Need excitement in her life? No, she her ass is at home where she's supposed to be, quiet and and, and and waiting to obediently serve her Lord. And if she does that, what will she get? A carefree life. That's it. A carefree life. A life where she ain't worried about if the bill is paid. She ain't worried about that. She not stressed. You know what I'm saying? A good woman really don't be stressed like that because she's able to procure a, a man that's willing to take care of her. Okay? But that's what we're looking in in Yahweh shop. But you got to keep it simple, man. Jake be striving and fighting and doing all this. That's why the scripture says in James, the fourth chapter, from whence comes wars and fighting, it comes even after your own lusts, personal beefs and stupid shit. And not for keeping keeping it simple. This ain't a popularity contest to be cute. We ain't here for all that, man. I know Jake want to be cute. Everybody want to shine, but this ministry ain't got nothing to do with all that. Right. Okay. Don't be going off, but we don't be prying into y'all daily lives and what you do yesterday. And I ain't finna, you know, make class. Be on point. If, if a brother is going into darkness, you're going to see it. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel the darkness coming off of him. And he ain't going to come because it's not going to be a priority. This is not going to be his priority. No more. We don't need to have no gimmicks for you to come here. Right. I don't want to put on no gimmicks for you to come here. We're going to have a picnic every second Sunday, every second Sabbath of the month. We're going to have the Israelite picnic and barbecue. Come on down. Jeez. Make sure you donate. We ain't doing that bullshit, man. Sorry. It's not about that. Okay? God, I got a quick one. This is Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 48. And I'm going to read it in verse 49. And it says, As I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, Sodom thy sister hath not done, she nor her daughters as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters. So he's even saying pretty much, damn, even Sodom is looking better than you niggas right now. Mm -hmm. You know, in verse 49 says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, mm. and abundance of idleness was Ooh. in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. So he's bringing that out about Sodom, but more so he's talking about Jake. He's saying even Sodom was known for this stuff, but y'all bypassed even Sodom when it comes to being full of bread. You know, not doing anything for the needy. And you can look at the poor and needy as those that need this truth. You got the poor and needy that's poor and needy, but they're being charged for the ministry. Mm -hmm. It's like, damn, they already poor and needy, you know? So you ain't doing nothing to strengthen their hands is what that verse is saying. So you can look at the Israelites here today, and they're filling that tab as what was written of here in Ezekiel 16 and 48 and 49. That's right. That was it in that precept. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 31 and 25, when we read it in the uh, Passion Translation, it says, Thou speaking of the virtuous woman, which could also be like it can be like woman of the most high faithful bride. Yeah. Uh, verse 25 says, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. <laughs> when she speaks her words are wise, and she gives instruction with kindness, she carefully watches over everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Mm. Yeah. Suffers nothing from laziness. Her mind is focused on what we doing? Chase, you know, our, our job. All right? We got to have that mindset, man. Okay? Because when you read that in Proverbs 31, that wife, man, she was a hard worker, man. You know? She was down for the crown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> got up early. She made sure everything was straight to the house. That's Our right. Family. That's right. And that's what we do. You got to be humble, man. First Peter uh, 5 and 6. Baba Kusha. First Peter 5 and 6. First Peter 5 and 6. It says, humble, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of the Most High that he might exalt you in due time. Yeah, man. Be low. Be humble. Be meek. Be poor. Be needy. Humble yourselves. Okay? 
We're not going to say that we're the, the uh, dagger men. We're not going to go marching around Barclay Center, blowing Rams horns over Kyrie Irving. Stupid shit. Yeah. Okay. George Floyd. We're not doing unity camps for people with completely opposing doctrines. We don't agree on nothing, but this is my brother. But we have to put that on this nigga Eden because he's believing in mermaids. He's looking at this nigga funny. Yeah. If you eat this nigga believe in mermaids or something. Nah. Yeah. Nah. You know. You want a Tootsie Roll? No, I'm not Tootsie Rolling with you. <laughs> hey, over there, the pig they Tootsie Rolling with somebody that believe in mermaid. Tripping. Man, let's go back. First Peter 5 and 6. Read it again. First Peter 5 and 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the Most High, that he may exalt you in due time. He's going to exalt us in due time. So we have to be willing and have faith and hope that if we continue to just preach this word, preach this word, minister, 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 we'll be exalted as we should be in due time. Right. Not to create some fake exaltation of ourselves on this side. That's a waste of time, energy, and spirit. Right. All right. A lot of waste of time, energy, and spirit is happening out here, especially when we get into the heat of Armageddon and the MOTB. As y'all can see in the news, it's popping off. Yeah. So we want to make sure we're in the right spirit. Okay. Now, I do want to get that in second Ezra. That, that's going to be one of my closeout scriptures. I wanted it in the GNT, though. If somebody can get second Ezra uh, 16 to 35 in the GNT, and whoever's got precepts, bring them out. Whatever precepts brothers have, I got one. bring them. This is uh, Proverbs 16 and 19. It says, Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Mixing in guys that don't even have the same doctrine. You got some. Bro, I had that scripture mix. written down. Beautiful. You're breaking spoil with the proud ass mm -hmm. niggas, man. Who don't even believe in this thing? You man. see that? It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. And you got to be able to, those who listen, you got to be able to identify these right. things in the spirit, man. When you see these inconsistencies that these groups have, and put the pieces together. Okay? They clearly making merchandise of you. Yep. It's not even a question, man. Anybody else got a precept? Let's go, champ. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in the NLT, verse 1, as well as verse 2, or really verse 1, actually, it says, When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom mm -hmm. to tell you the most high secret plan. Yeah, didn't try to woo you with, with how I talk, didn't have no whole bunch of gimmicks. Okay? It was just the word of the Heavenly Father. Keep reading, it's going to say it. Now, verse 2. For I decided that while I was with you, I will forget everything except that I will shout Hamashiach, the one who was crucified. Keeping it simple, man. Keeping a, a focus and the point on the main thing. Yahweh Yahweh and Salvation through Yahweh Shah. That's what this is about. Nothing else, man. Connecting the ministry to anything else is BS and is leading the flock astray. It's, you, you, you're corrupting the truth when you do that. Okay? You gotta have faith in this thing, man. You know? Philippians chapter 3, starting verse 18, the NLT, where I've told you often before, and I'll say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they are headed for destruction, for their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things. And they only think about this life here on earth. That's a good. That's all they think about. Break it down. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. And that's the thing that the uh, most of the is on you. They, they, they steady wanting people, telling people that these guys, they only out for your money. Mm -hmm. And your conduct is evident that they're against uh, the conduct of what you have, what you know, what you You know, they, they're all about their appetite, which will satisfy them. You know, they want to be more into it. They're cute. Mm -hmm. man put there that they, they put themselves up at Passover. Sitting on throne, like they're already kings, you know, coming in on horses, like they're a power. Right. Always seems to talk Before I can continue with my message, they brag about shameful shit. You know, they brag about shame activity to try to link it somewhere to Israel. 
saying we're doing the right to steal. No, all that bullshit is shame. Yeah. You know, bullshit is up in the world. Yeah. 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 It's really just trying to save your life on this earth on this side. They're building up all this stuff up. You get more class town, all this shit. Man. It ain't gonna it ain't gonna last. Yep, but like I said, they in that Dr. Umar spirit. They Thank you, sister Avanti. Ten dollars coming on the cash app. Thank you, sister. Next time make it 20, but thank you for that 10. I know you barely had that. Thank you, sister. There you go. Before I continue this mess, donations. 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 Gifts. 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 More gifts. More gifts. If they doing that, man, that ain't it. That ain't it, man. That ain't it. That ain't what this is about. This is gonna burn and, 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 and be cast into perdition. Okay. Thank you, Sister Avanti. I got something real quick. This shit is hilarious. This is Philippians chapter two, verse um, verse three. Philippians two and three. Come. Oh man. <laughs> It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. And that's vain glory. At the end of the day, all the stuff, all the gimmicks and shit, what is it really going to help aid toward the kingdom? Yeah. Nothing. It's vain glory at the end of the day. Vain yeah. meaning empty. You know, it's not going to help your crown. It ain't going to help all the stones, you know, that you're going to have in your chalice in the kingdom. You know, it ain't nothing but fulfilling, you know, your role and your portion in this world. But it says, let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem each other better than themselves. You know, so it's about being lowly at the end of the day. No, man. And that's what you see with the debate demons. Mm -hmm. It's all about one-upping somebody, man. Right. I cut you. No. Instead of actually edifying and uplifting the flock. Mm -hmm. And it's a money grab because they know that people are going to come for the controversy. And they're going to they're gonna have donations right. and gifts. You know, they're going to have donations and they're going to have gifts. For the controversy and the vainglory that's going on, man. That's what they're about, man. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just real. Anybody else with a precept? Uh, you know, I was holding this. This is uh first Thessalonians 5 and 22. It says, abstain from all appearance of evil. And that's what they give an appearance of evil with their uh the way they want to package this truth with the world, man. Wearing uh, t-shirts at the camp. Hats at the camp, and we should abstain from all appearance of evil, man. That there is no blame brought to the ministry, man. You know. Yep. All right. So if anybody, nobody got, I want to get. Does anybody have the GNT? I'll read it if y'all don't. You you have it? Sure. Can you get that Second Ezra? Sure. Second Ezra, sixteenth chapter. Sure. Uh, Baba this is, uh, sure. this is Second Ezra chapter sixteen and thirty-five in the GNT, and uh, it has a heading and it says the Most High's people. Must prepare for the end. Boom. It says, Now listen to my message, you people who serve the Lord. It is the Lord's message. So receive it and believe what he says. Mm -hmm. The disasters are approaching rapidly. And we see these disasters uh, approach rapidly. They they want to uh, uh, push out the MOTB. It's coming. It's here. Okay. Now you got Elon on X. On Twitter X basically wanting to connect that with uh cryptocurrency payment systems, right? And they there they, they, you know they had the rumors that he wanted to buy YouTube and all this and that. But you see uh what, what Trump is talking about, they're advancing these CBDC systems and, and doing all of that, man. Okay. We just talked about earlier the state of Israel, they ain't playing. So you had the state of Israel kill. The top guy in Hezbollah, this is like yesterday or the day before yesterday. So they had another guy that they rose up as the new leader. They just killed this nigga like four hours ago. <laughs> you know? And they put like, they pushing tanks, right? So we're gonna see if Syria is gonna join in and, and, and aid. Right. And then Damascus shall be able to ruin his heat. We're gonna see. If Iran joins in, I doubt it. No. They acting like little old bitches. Not directly at least. Right. But we're gonna see what happens, man. These things can escalate real quickly to where you have a regional conflict that crashes the economy and then right. 
everything's moved around all of a sudden, man. Like, uh, like one of the brothers said last night, they suspend the election. I hope so. They've been talking. You said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know. So we're looking at these plagues and we're looking at these things that are getting ready to come. And this scripture is talking about the mindset that you should carry. Okay. So keep reading. Verse thirty-six, GNT. It is the Lord's message, so receive it and believe what He says. The disasters are approaching rapidly, and they will not be delayed. Mm -hmm. A woman in the ninth month of pregnancy may suffer labor pains for several hours, but when the time comes for the baby to be born, there is no longer any delay. Uh huh. It, it is what it is when the contractions hit, and then you know you start to see them. They start happening less than ten seconds apart. There ain't no stopping it from that point. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. It's coming. That's how these prophecies are leaning on the womb of the world. Go ahead, ready to break forth. 39 GMT says, in the same way, the disasters that are coming on the earth will not be delayed, and mm -hmm. the world will groan when it is caught in its labor pains. Mm -hmm. Listen to my message, my people. And get ready for the battle. Get ready. Go ahead. When the disasters come, you must live as people whose home is not in this world. You got to be like a pilgrim, right? Your home ain't in this world. You got groups that, that want to be cute, that want to be popular to make you believe that you're going to have this fantasy Israelite life on this side. You ain't. Okay? That's not the mindset to groom. That's not spiritual. Okay, I'm not saying go home and slap, and slap shit out your wife, quit your job, you know, and, and go live in the back of a dumpster. But what's the mindset? All right, these are fleeting things. Go ahead. Forty-two merchants must not expect to make a profit from what they sell. Mm -hmm. Your heart ain't in it like that. You know, you your mindset is not so so drawn in. Man, I had a practice, I had a business, and I had to let go of it because it was I cared about it too much. It was taking me away from the truth. Jake, and the most high made it happen to where it just got full-blown attacked. Man. To where like this is a distraction in your life. I'm taking it away because I need you to do something else. One of the best lessons I've ever learned in my life, if not the best lesson I've ever learned. Because my give a fuck level went through the roof. Just don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck level is, is extremely high because of going through that. Certain things I go through, it, it's just like I made an anime. Certain things happen, ding, ding, don't care. There's a higher mission and calling. So you and brothers, you're going to be tested. You got to have the mindset, man. All right? So for those of you that have businesses, and they go, man, you trying to make it work? It ain't working. And you know, I got. I can't come to camp. I, man, yeah, okay. Keep keep that mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah, kid, yeah, because we ain't gonna say nothing to your ass. Oh, I'm not coming to camp because I gotta do this. Con, I, con. A few moments later, we just don't see you no more. All right, keep reading. Con. Sirach sixteen and forty-two again in GNT. Merchants must not expect to make a profit from what they sell. Just do the best you can. Most high fill in the gaps. You got to have faith, man. Most high fill in the gaps, man. Elder Yashawamba was telling me something last night where it's just, the most high just filled in the gap where he didn't know what, you know? It's just most high was like, I got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, a lot of But you can't worry about it. You know? Go ahead. God, second of 1642. Uh, Merchants must not expect to make a profit from what they sell. They must be ready to run for their lives. Mm -hmm. Their customers must expect to lose whatever they buy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Go ahead. Whoever builds a house should not plan to live in it. Uh huh. Farmers should not expect to harvest their crop or pick their grapes. It's a mindset of indifference about this world. All right, look up the definition of indifferent. To be indifferent. You got to have an indifferent mentality. And it's hard to be indifferent when you have a woman, and kids, <laughs> and business, and, and different things in this world. And they're not going to understand it.
But you as a man of the Lord have to understand the indifference. Like the angels are indifferent. Somebody got that definition? I got it. Let's go, champ. It's uh, indifference. Um, Adam online, noun, right? It says the quality of being neither good nor bad, neutral quality. Neutral. Like, all right, you know, it's going to go good or it ain't. I don't know. Impartiality. And you're impartial to it. You're not swayed in your spirit. The angels are indifferent. The angels are, why are you doing that, y'all? No. No. They're not. They're just going to do it. Okay, go ahead. He goes on and says, uh, not preferring one to the other. Right. You can't prefer your business, your wife, your kids, your mama, your brother over the Yahweh Shemiah Shah, what he wants for you. You got to be indifferent. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. He got a uh, definition for me. He says, of no consequence. No consequence. Right. It doesn't matter either way. doesn't matter either way. So this life, this world, this has no consequence, man. So do you take care of your situations and you do the best you can? Absolutely. But it's, it's a secondary tier, maybe even a tertiary tier to the primary thing, which is this brotherhood and this ministry. Okay? Keep reading. Call it and read it. Second Ezra chapter 16 at 43. We're not here for a popularity contest of the be cute. All right? So when, when you see these guys, they are not indifferent. They need them likes. They need them donations. They need to be cute for you and to give them your money and your attention and your time. Do we give a damn? No. Like the guys that came out to the camp yesterday, we going to preach, they going to get it, or they not. We casting out a net. We're indifferent. All right? You got a precept? I was going to say, if it, a synonym for indifference is being balanced. Boom. Balanced. Kind. Kind. Great point. I'll read it here. Second Ezra 16 and 43 GMT. Farmers should not expect to harvest their crops or pick their grapes. Those who marry must not expect to have children. Mm -hmm. And those who don't marry must live as if they have been widowed. Woo! Anything that is done will be useful. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? That's a hardcore mindset. And what was the uh, title for, for this section? Uh, the title for is uh, the most high people must prepare for the end. You mm. got to prepare for the end. I mean, that's all I need on that. That's all I want on that, bro. You know, mm. it's just to grab that mindset. You know, we're not here for all the glitz and glamour. The glitz and glamour comes whenever you have a shower return. Okay. Do you have some Yeah, I got a quick one. Uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Land back on says, vanity of vanities, say the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Mm -hmm. that's, nice and quick. That's, that's pretty much what it is on this side because this isn't the end-all deal. Like the scripture says, we got to be at pilgrims here. You know, as a, we got to pass the time. Well, that's the journey. Uh, that's our journey out here. But in First Peter, it also says that we got to be at pilgrims on earth. When you get that word pilgrim or pilgrim in the blue letter, it says pretty much um, as one traveling to a holy place. See, because this isn't our this isn't our uh, uh, mandatory uh, abode. But, you know, we're here. These bodies that in this life, this isn't really truly it. This is just we're here to accomplish a mission at the end of the day. You know, that's right. Well, good. You had some. Yeah. Let's go, champ. So, Rock ten and twenty one. It says, "The fear of the Lord goes before the attain of authority, but roughness." And pride is the losing thereof. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, the glory is the fear of the Lord. The glory is the fear of the Lord. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, man. That's the mindset that we have to maintain, man. So, Lord willing, that was edifying, man. With that being said, we're going to say, call hello. Double honors once again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing the word of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh, Shem sincerity and truth. Shalom. 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 Yeah, I'm not.